Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A tense and deadly situation on the city's west side felt throughout the city. Latest details and video from those moments as our crew was in the middle of it all. Plus, new fears of a widening war in Ukraine. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, a look at the damage caused in civilian areas. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, starting at 58 degrees, uh, kind of warming up even in the morning now. And good morning to you. It is Tuesday, March 15th. Hey, thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good Monday. I know I'm still getting adjusted with time change. You too. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yes. Um, I was telling Steph my my nap yesterday wound up lasting like four or five hours. My bad, body's all out of whack. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but I'm here this morning. Uh, no promises beyond that. But good morning to you, Mike. Good morning. Yeah, and grab a jacket this morning because even though it's mild right now, we'll continue to cool off and we'll have some cool ish mornings. We had that front move through last night and then warm afternoon. So yeah, made it up in the low 80s yesterday, maybe down a notch or two today. But spring is definitely in the air and uh, really nothing going on. We've got a lot of clear skies out there right now. Of course, we were talking about that front and yesterday the chance for it to touch off one or two showers with thunderstorms. It did indeed do that in our eastern counties that has continued to work its way on out of here. In behind it, we have temperatures that are in the 50s. But again, with the very dry air that's in place, will continue to drop down and some of this cooler air moves on in here. So uh, we dropped down another five, six degrees or so before it's all said and done. Wind has shifted around out of the northwest and it's already kind of breezy. 20 mile per hour wind gusts at Bandera, 23 lost Maples, and it is going to be on the windier side today. Now there's nothing formally posted, but really dry air, windy conditions, haven't had rain in forever. Fire danger is going to be on the high side throughout really the rest of the week. And we have another, well, another windy day in store tomorrow and then especially on, on Friday again. Everything's on the low side with the allergens, mold, ash, and oak. And this morning, grab a jacket because, like I said, temperatures will drop down a few more degrees. We'll be right around the low 50s. A normal seasonally cool temperature, that's right about where you would expect it to be this time of year. And then a high temperature up to 78 later on today. And again, it is going to be on the windy side. We start to warm up. We have another, got to do the air quotes, cold front moving on through here. It'll knock temperatures down later on in the week, but uh, nothing too awfully cold out there. Rain chances maybe way down the road. We'll talk about that coming up. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. A big story we've been following since yesterday afternoon here in San Antonio. Deadly shooting and rising tensions on our city's west side. A crowd confronting police after learning several officers shot and killed a man. The family of that man has been ident identified him as Kevin Johnson. It's all happened yesterday afternoon just blocks from Woodlawn Lake near North Hamilton and Culebra. Officers say a man ran from them and pulled a gun. And that's when Police Chief William McManus says three officers fired shots. Police say Johnson was wanted on two felony warrants, one for assaulting an officer, the other for felon in possession of a firearm. Lee Waldman was there all afternoon yesterday as crowds confronted police. Moments after Police Chief William McManus spoke about an officer-involved shooting on the west side. At some point, he pulled a gun from his waistband. At what point the officer shot, I don't know because, again, I haven't seen the, 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 uh, the body cam. <laughs> Tensions reached a boiling point between Kevin Johnson's family, the community, and police. <laughs> Kevin's sister Jasmine also pepper sprayed. She tells us her brother had a criminal history but had turned his life around and had struggled with mental illness. He's, he's not a bad person, so there's no reason why this should have happened. I mean, nobody deserves to get shot in the back nine times, for Christ's sakes. Get the mom. Y'all gonna spray her? The tire of an SAPD unit deflated. Several people appearing to be taken into custody and placed into a van. Kevin's father collapsing in the street, crying for his son. They know they shot my son from behind and that's wrong. They shot him nine times and nobody here has nothing to say to me. Nobody has nothing to say. As officers tried to leave, their windows punched. Their way was blocked. That's how they protect and serve us. They left. As things cooled, a grieving family was left crying for their son, brother, and friend they lost. That was Lee Waldman reporting. The three officers involved in the shooting are on administrative duty, which is protocol after a situation like this. 
They'll remain on leave as the investigation continues and the district attorney reviews the body camera video. Per SAPD's policy, the audio video will be released 60 days after a critical incident like this one. We'll continue to follow the story and keep you updated. Well, now to the expanding war in Ukraine, Russian troops on the ground appear to have stalled. The Russian army now relying on airstrikes. This morning, more devastating missile attacks on civilians and apartment buildings as the Biden administration contemplates severe consequences for Russia's actions. ABC's, as ABC's Ike Ajanchi reports, though the airstrikes are meant to cause terror, Ukrainian resistance appears for now to be holding. This morning, a widening war in Ukraine. New visuals from the Ukrainian National Guard showing the path of destruction after the city of Mariupol, under siege and without power and little food for over a week, was targeted by Russian airstrikes. Fires burning across the city. Many high-rise apartment buildings have been heavily damaged or destroyed. Officials say over 2,000 people have been killed here. And in Kyiv, a rocket intercepted, crashing into the city street, killing at least one person and injuring six others. In a suburb, another person dead after officials say a Russian shell hit this residential building. ABC's Ian Panel is there. This is exactly what indiscriminate Russian bombardment actually looks like. A senior U.S. official warning the city of Lviv could be the next target. Russians believe high-ranking members of Ukraine's resistance are in the city and that it's being used used as a staging ground for Western military aid to Ukraine. Meanwhile, the economic sanctions putting a squeeze on Russia. A U.S. official confirming to ABC News that the Kremlin reached out to China for military equipment, with China said to be considering the request, though Beijing denies it. We will ensure that no country uh, is uh, able to get away with such a thing. A fourth round of peace talks between Russia and Ukraine was held virtually with another call expected today. Yet the former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine says a Russian triumph in this war won't happen. There is no path to victory for Russia because the Ukrainian people will continue to resist. And the International Court of Justice will rule tomorrow on war crime allegations brought against Russia by Ukraine. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. In your morning headlines, some of the truckers in the so-called People's Convoy finally arrived in Washington yesterday. They made a trip from Maryland where they've been holding a protest against COVID mandates for 10 days now. They went into the city despite saying earlier that they wouldn't. Washington police closed some streets and highway ramps and urged commuters to use Metro Rail. The convoy involves hundreds of truckers who drove across the country to protest COVID mandates. U.S. Capitol could be reopening to the public in phases beginning in about two weeks. Yesterday, staff from a variety of select sectors, including Capitol Police, discussed a draft proposal. It would have the Capitol reopen little by little starting March 28. The limit for business visitors would slightly increase and some tours could be given to students with a maximum of 50 kids. In phase two, there would be a limited reopening of the Capitol Visitor Center effective May 30th. The highly tentative date for the last phase would be Labor Day. U.S. Capitol has been closed to the public for two years now. We have some breaking news. There's been a search for an alleged serial killer, uh, someone uh, suspected of killing homeless people in both in New York City and Washington, D.C. And understand an arrest has just been made in the nation's capital. We'll try to get more information for you. 438, about 58 degrees. And he may have been limited last season, but defenses end. Demarcus Lawrence just got re-signed with the Cowboys with a big deal. Details coming up. Spurs trying to get a hold of Carl Anthony Towns last night. He was just too good. Highlights from last night's game against the Timberwolves coming up in morning sports. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guide this morning. Flashing lights there at Loop 1604 at Old Oh, Hausman. Looked like Hausman. I-37 at the Alamo Dome. That camera. Things looking good right there. Met outside with live cam. We're in that weird in between. It was really cool and we're not quite hot yet. We're in the weird kind of humid uh, stuck place right now. The AC doesn't want to quite kick on yet because it's only 57 degrees. We'll be right back. 
Welcome back to Shante Murray, Kelvin Johnson, Yaka Pertle, all back on the court for the Spurs last night who continue their homestand against the surging Minnesota Timberwolves. Both offenses came to play. First quarter, Johnson steps into the three, drains it, ties the game at 22, but the Wolves find some separation late in the frame. Granthony Towns muscles his way through, gets it to fall, count it, and one. Minnesota leads 40-32 after one. Second quarter, Spurs trying D to offense. Zach Collins records the first of three straight blocks to start the break, but Spurs trail 75-73 at the half. Third quarter, Spurs still keeping pace. Keldon Johnson knocks down another three. We're tied at 84. Then Lonnie Walker nails a triple to pull San Antonio within four. But Towns was just too good last night. Minnesota's big man finished with 60 points, breaking his own franchise record. Spurs fall 149-139. Car was fantastic. He, uh, he drove it. He shot it. Uh, you know, he always plays hard. He's a hell of a player. It's not like it was a surprise, but uh, tonight he was special. So give him credit. Okay, Spurs are off today, then back at the AT&T Center tomorrow night to hoax the Oklahoma City Thunder tip off set for 730. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Cowboys have decided to re-sign defensive end Demarcus Lawrence to a three-year, $40 million contract. And of that $40 million, $30 million is guaranteed. It means Lawrence will become the first defensive end in NFL history to have his contract guaranteed for seven straight seasons. Even though injuries have limited him last season, Lawrence has tallied 48 and a half sacks in his eight NFL seasons. And that's a look at morning sports. And time now, 443 and 57 degrees for now. Coming up next, some good news for the family of the late Bob Saget after a judge ruled that pictures or video from the actor's death could not be released to the media. And welcome back. It's 446. A Florida judge has ruled that photos or video footage of Bob Saget's death cannot be released to the media. ABC's Will Reeve has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a big legal victory for Saget's family. A Florida judge ruling that no photos or body camera footage of his sudden death can be released to media outlets. We have an unresponsive guest in a room. My officer is telling me that there's no pulse. Bob Saget was found unresponsive in his hotel room hours after performing a stand-up comedy set in Orlando. The Orange County Medical Examiner determining that Saget died of a head injury, likely Daddy. sustained in a fall. The Saget family saying they're grateful that the judge granted their request for an injunction to preserve Bob's dignity as well as their privacy rights, especially after suffering this unexpected and tragic loss. I do believe that is the best outcome to protect his family and protect their privacy interests. And we'll have much more on what this ruling means coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. Let's check Trans Guide for you early bird commuters out there at 447. You've got the road pretty much to yourself at Loop 410 near Callahan. And the same at 410 at Perimbital. Yeah, kind of quiet. I mean, it is spring break for a well, lot of people. Still. Spring break. It's early. early. We're still suffering. I mean, dealing with the time change. <laughs> suffering. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good word there. Well, I, we always gripe about it a little bit, and, and we're kind of having fun with that. Yeah. And then it happens, and it's like, oh man, this is like a diet version of jet lag in a way. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anyone personally who who likes this time change. No, no, and I wish there would be kind of a groundswell of support to stay on standard time. But a lot of people like that extra hour in the afternoon or the hour moved mm. toward the afternoon. The extra. Well, the, the if you hours, meet them, so. let us know. I, a, lot, <laughs> a lot of folks like it. OK. And you know who the biggest advocate for that is, is the golf industry. Oh, ah, the golf industry. So okay. they can because you can play later. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. OK. Play during the week. So thanks to golf marketing consultant Mike Oster H. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, I, I like I was, quote my mom always says God's time. Go back to standard time. You know, you're on. Amen. Anyway, Beautiful view out there. You can see clear skies. And at the very top of your screen, that is the moon. It is almost full. It's going to be full on Friday and absolutely gorgeous out there. Of course, we had that front move through overnight, and now the wind has shifted around out of the northwest. We've got some pretty good gusts, 23 miles per hour already at Lost Maples, 18 Bandera. And we're going to see some blustery conditions throughout the rest of today. And the, the dew point temperatures um, have really, really dropped down. We are at 32 right now, so very dry air. And so even though temperatures right now are in the mid and upper 50s still with the 
winds coming in here out of the northwest, pulling in the relatively cooler air and the clear skies. We're still going to continue to drop down a few more degrees this morning. As a matter of fact, these dew points are down uh, anywhere from 10, 15, close to 20 degrees compared to this time yesterday. And with the dry air, with the windy conditions, we're going to have to watch out for the fire danger is going to be very high, especially off in western counties. And that's pretty much going to be all week long because, well, obviously we haven't had rain. It seems like in forever. There's no rain in the forecast through the rest of the week and nothing's is really going to change as far as the the wind and the the, the humidity conditions. So just be on the the cautious side, especially out to the west. It, air stays very dry, northwesterly flow all day long and into tomorrow. Humidity is going to start to come back in here as we approach Thursday, but just in time with some sort of a return of the humidity, we get another front moving on through here. Now, as far as low temperatures, and you can see this very well, tomorrow, mid 40s. Here comes the humidity, keeps low temperatures up a little bit more. Then the front comes on through here and it knocks us down. It's not anything brutally cold, but it's just going to be kind of trimming things off a little bit as far as those temperatures. Make it up to 84 by Thursday and then back down to the 70s, and then we'll sort of re set come back up and then the humidity is definitely going to make a return by starting later on Sunday into Monday and we do have some rain chances. It's still a few days off. Don't get overly excited about that, but at least there's something down the road as far as rain chances. 67 degrees today at noon, sunny, breezy, beautiful, beautiful day. So jacket in the morning won't need it by the afternoon. We'll be down a couple of notches from yesterday. Yesterday we did hit 82. We'll be up to 78 today, which is still a few degrees above normal. And then tomorrow back to the low 80s after a cool start. And again, a good indication of very dry air when you have 30, 40 degree differences between the low and the high temperature, make it up to 84 on Thursday. That front moves on through here. Not going to do anything as far as squeezing out any rings. There's no, no moisture to be squeezed out. Temperatures will go back to the mid 70s on Friday. Great looking weekend setting up. Spring begins officially Sunday morning. It, humidity will begin to return then in the afternoon and a couple of showers on Monday. We'll keep an eye out for that. Paranoid about getting pinched Thursday. I set out the green tie last night. You already so did. It's, so it's out there in a visible <laughs> spot. <laughs> well, that's good. You're, You're very prepared. anxious about this. this year. I, yeah. I, I am. Yeah, I just I'm you know, it's a new hashtag. Fear Stephanie. <laughs> I, I'm really not that scary. I know. I know. I'm having fun with it. 451 about 57 degrees. Worry about you. <laughs> Coming up next, why Dolly Parton is respectfully declining her nomination into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Your entertainment news coming up after the break. We are not afraid of you, New York. We're the bravest people in this city. <clears throat> it's the end of season one for the How I Met Your Father gang. The tenth and final episode of the season premieres today, and people are already speculating on who the father might be. Showrunners Elizabeth Berger and Isaac Aptiker definitely know, telling me there's a firm plan. Kind of. So yes, in our in our minds, we know who the father is, but we're also always open to uh, to changing our minds. So you know, who knows? But yes, yeah. we do. We. As of right now, we, we see how this ends. How I Met Your Father has been renewed by Hulu for a season two. No word yet when that'll drop. Dolly Parton says she's not rock and roll enough for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The country music legend is a nominee for this year's class. And in a message on social media, she says she's flattered and grateful for the nomination, but doesn't think she's earned it. So she's respectfully bowing out. She says she hopes to be considered again if she's ever worthy. And the nomination has actually inspired her to put out a rock album. Dua Lipa must be levitating. Her song Levitating set a record on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart, hitting its 70th week on the chart, the most ever by a woman. One week more than the previous record holder, Leanne Rhymes, with How Do I Live in 1998. I got a feeling. And I got a feeling Will I Am will be partying today. It's his birthday. The Black Eyed Peas hitmaker is 47. And actress and producer Eva Longoria is also 47. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Our team's kind of decided now we, that's going to be our earworm today. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I think I can live with that one. 456, about 57 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, a local officer lucky he was not hit when a driver crashed into his patrol unit. Why he's worried that there could be more instances similar to this one. A New Braunfels man facing prison time after being convicted for making threats against President Joe Biden. And a quick check of the roads with TransGuide this morning. Looking at I-37 at Pecan Valley, things are moving. Later on, we'll be checking with Justin Horn, who's filling in with traffic this morning. We'll be right back.
We have some late breaking news. A building that was under construction just east of downtown has come crumbling down due to a big fire. It broke out around three this morning. Fire crews are wrapping up the scene right now. Katrina Weber is there at the corner of Center and North Swiss, not far from East Houston Street. Katrina, what do we know about how this started so far? Katrina, can you hear us? All right, right now you can see what's left of the scene there, folks, uh, fire crews. I understand there was about 20 to 23 fire units on the scene yeah. in the overnight hours. At last check, I think it was down to eight or nine. And then here in the shot, we can't really see, but uh, we were told that it's a three, it was a three-story building. Looks like one crew member is out there. Okay. okay. All right, we're waiting to uh, hear from Katrina herself coming up here in just a little bit. She's probably trying to gather a little bit more information, and I understand we're having some technical issues, but at least that is a live look at the scene right there in the uh, shadow of the Tower of the Americas. We'll try to get more information on this story as it develops. All right, so good morning to you. It is Tuesday, March 15th. Hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, waking up kind of cold again, you know, 57. You will need a jacket if you're going to spend some time outdoors. But later on, looking forward to that warm up again. Here's the difference maker. 57 versus, say, 47 is a difference. And the humidity. There seems to be a little bit more moisture out there this morning. Mike. Well, it, we're actually drying out now as we speak, and that's allowing temperatures to, uh, to drop down. And temperatures are actually uh, gotten down even more so than what that uh, little number says there in the bottom of your screen. 54 right now. And dew point has really, really dried out. We've got northwesterly wind at about uh, three miles per hour and then we are going to see a high temperature all the way up into the upper 70s later on today. So it's going to be a beautiful day, kind of a jacket this morning and then T-shirt by later on this afternoon. That's going to be the situation the next couple of days. The aquifer yesterday went down three tenths of a foot and the allergens just low amounts of everything. And I don't know, I got a bunch of oak leaves in my yard, but no oak pollen as of yet. But you know, that lovely orange and yellow dust is, <laughs> is just around the corner. All right, as far as the, uh, the humidity temperatures right now, uh, 54 here in town, as I mentioned, 52 out there in Curl. These numbers are close to what the the normal average lows are this time of year. We'll continue to drop down a few more degrees, but the one issue we're going to be dealing with today is the wind. It, it's kind of breezy already. Wind out of the uh, northwest. We've got some gusts out there up to 23 at Lost Maples, 16 burning stage. It's going to be uh, blustery all day long with the dry air and the windy conditions and everything is so dry on the ground, the fire danger is going to be high. Just got to keep emphasizing that this week, that uh, even though there's nothing formal posted as far as any watches, warnings, anything like that, just really, really be careful this week. Seasonally cool this morning, and then sunny, windy, upper 70s later on today. Good looking day. Cool start tomorrow, even warmer, warm finish. We're going to be even warmer on Thursday. And just when the humidity tries to come back in here, we've got another cold front just by name only. Yeah, we will trim temperatures a little bit toward the end of the week and for the weekend, but uh, still not going to be anything bone chilling at all. Actually, we've got some great weather setting up for this weekend. Maybe some rain way down the road. We'll check on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority again, Stevens off this morning. Justin Horn is here. Good morning, sir. What's going on? Hey, good morning to you. Hey, it's, it's very quiet. Good news for our early morning commuters. Everything looks good. Uh, we're taking a look at some of the trans guide shots here, and there is really nothing to look at. We had some construction cleaning up. Um, places like 1604, but most of that is now gone. So you're going to have smooth sailing for now. Roads obviously dry, as Mike pointed out. So it's a, it's a quiet morning. A couple more shots here. Uh, 35 in Maine looks good there. And looking at the big picture, there's nothing to worry about at this hour. We'll keep you posted, though, if any of that changes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. All right, back to our late breaking news. That building under construction east of downtown came crumbling down due to a fire overnight. And again, that broke out around three this morning. We're going to go ahead and go back to Katrina, who was on the scene, who was real near downtown. Katrina. Good morning. Uh, we were told that arson investigators are here, are coming here to actually take a look at this scene and try to figure out exactly how this fire started. Right now, they don't have any easy answers. What we do know is that this was a building under construction, really just a wood frame, according to firefighters. So there were no uh, utilities on here that could have started this fire. Uh, that is why arson investigators are coming here. You can still see that this is a, that there are still flames and smoke coming up from what had been that building. 
And also, if you notice, there are power lines stretched across the street. Those came down during the height of the fire. Let me give you a look at the video so you can see how intense this was. The firefighters got here around 3 o'clock this morning on their way from another fire just a few blocks away when they found this engulfed in flames. Uh, they, they said that all they could do was to fight this fire from the outside. There was no getting inside to try to put it out. They had to stay outside and put out those flames. A big concern was that uh, there's an apartment building right across the street, very close to that, and so they had to evacuate that building. About 20 people got that wake-up call around 3 o'clock this morning and had to get out. Uh, there was a fear that their building also might catch fire. fire. Firefighters were able to put out the flames before it reached this other building, so no damage here, but a lot of damage to what had been a building under construction. Uh, no injuries reported, and again, no cause just yet. Reporting live east of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A man from New Braunfels, uh, and a former Jetson IC police officer, has been convicted for making threats against then presidential candidate Joe Biden. 55 year old William Towery faces up to five years in prison plus supervised release and fines. It stems from an incident in December of 2019. Now, court documents reveal Towery had responded to a text message with threats made regarding a campaign rally where Biden was to attend. Sentencing will be on July 13th. A Universal City police officer says he's lucky he wasn't hit when a driver barreled into his patrol unit earlier this month. Now, police say the driver behind the wheel may have been drinking and worries that there could soon be a rise in DWIs. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavasso spoke with investigators about this incident. As I see it coming, I have to go and I start running out of the way to get out of the way of the situation. Universal City Police Officer Devontae Smith says it was only a matter of seconds before his life was on the line. And then I see this car coming and it's it's moving pretty fast. I can tell it's moving pretty fast. And there's a moment where I'm I'm thinking, is he going to stop? This dash cam video captured the heart pounding moments. The officer dodged the car. Smith was on the scene of another crash when a driver slammed into his patrol unit. This is what was left behind. Shock set in, uh, but then also action so that I could save my life. And then, you know, it, also the driver, once the accident was over, to make sure that he was safe, too. The driver was arrested and charged with a DWI. Last year, UCPD says there was a total of 52 DWI arrests and 21 of those involved to crash. These types of calls are, are the a chief's worst nightmare. UCPD Police Chief Johnny Siemens worries because it happens too often. He encourages drivers to plan ahead and reminds them there are options. We 100% control uh, the outcomes in these if we start with the end in mind. These officers suggest using a ride sharing service or having a designated driver. And with Fiesta fast approaching, they believe planning ahead is life saving. I'm all for a good time, but there's no reason to risk anyone's life for that. Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. 507 55 degrees and still ahead on GMSA why advocates are pushing Congress to extend free school food waivers for children in need. Plus, if you're look, a working parent looking for child care, we'll tell you about a free program that could help you out. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, 55 degrees, chilly, but not as cold as it was yesterday morning. We'll be checking in with Mike to see what it looks like for the rest of your week. Right back. And welcome back. It's 5:11. As prices increase, people may be looking for a way to help their budget. There is a program that offers free childcare. However, the time to apply is running out. You may have heard us tell you about the program back in October, and as of this morning, only 2,000 slots have been filled, leaving 2,500 slots still open. So it's called the Service Industry Recovery Program, but you need to apply by tomorrow. The program is meant for people who work in the service or arts industry. Texas Work First. Commission offers one year of free child care. If you'd like to apply, we have a link on our website at KSET.com. As if the pandemic didn't leave families vulnerable enough, spiking food and gas prices are causing some to make heartbreaking decisions. Fill up the car or truck or get groceries. That's why free school programs are more important than ever. During the pandemic, waivers were granted to feed hungry kids at school, but those will expire in June. Many parents, teachers and advocates hope they'll be extended, considering rising costs are sure to hurt families financially. We're going to have a lot of hungry kids, a lot of kids that aren't feeling secure. Um, Food is security for them, right? So they, you, you can't learn without food in your belly. You can't grow without food in your belly. 
Advocates with organizations like No Kid Hungry Texas has been pushing Congress to extend those free school food waivers through the USDA. We'll keep you posted. Time now, 512, and for now, it's 55 degrees out there. Coming up in your tech news, you might be surprised to learn CD sales are up from last year. The reason for the increase after the break. DreamResorts.com with savings of up to 40%. Faces get all the love. What about the body? New Dove Shower Collection is infused with hyaluronic and peptide serums to make your skin feel smoother and more radiant. New Dove Body Love Face Care Ingredients now in the shower. Got lingering odors? Grab Febreze Small Spaces. Press firmly to activate, and Small Spaces continuously eliminates and prevents odors. To freshen up any small room, for up to 45 days. Febreze. 516 Twitter rolling back at a change to its timeline just days after it was introduced. ABC's Monaco Sar Abdi has details on what's expected in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Twitter is reversing a change to its home feed after backlash from users. The change, implemented a week ago, prioritized showing users popular tweets instead of tweets appearing in chronological order. Users immediately voiced their disapproval. Twitter responded with a message saying, we heard you. Apple is adapting to the pandemic era. Its latest software update allows you to unlock your iPhone with your face without having to remove your mask. Once a new operating system is installed, the mask feature for Face ID will have to be activated manually. Finally, who needs streaming technology when CDs are still around? And apparently all the rage. The record industry says CD sales were up 21% last year. That's the first increase since 2004. The reopening of record stores and CD sales at concerts are among the reasons for the jump. Those are your Tech Bites. All right, looking at traffic, everything's still looking good for our early morning commuters. Uh, some of the trans guy shots here, 410 at Callahan. Uh, not a lot of traffic yet. 410 Perrin Vital, same store. We've had some construction here or there on some of the roads, but that's really being cleaned up at this point, or picked up, I should say. And the uh, good, uh, good looking conditions there at 21 at Hildebrand. Uh, clear conditions as far as weather goes, and Mike will tell you more about that. But as we look at the big picture here, it's all green. We do have a few construction barrels here and there, but uh, again, it's not causing uh, many issues at all. So one last look at Trans Guide here. We'll do it quick because there's not much to talk about. 604 John Peace. All good. So, Mike, it's uh, fairly warm out there, comparatively speaking, to the last several days. Compared to what we had over the weekend, yes, when it was, uh, again, 26 Saturday, 28 on Sunday. Yeah, whole different story. We are, well, yesterday we stayed almost uh, 20 degrees warmer than that, and that's the situation this morning. And you're talking about clear skies, pictures worth a thousand words. There is the beautiful moon just a couple of days away from being full, and we're just going to watch that set. And just about the time that's dropping below the horizon, Look in the other direction, the sun's going to be coming up and it's going to be a spectacular sunrise this morning. We do have a decent breeze out there. The gusts that are being reported uh, about 15 to 20 miles per hour out in portions of the hill country, and it is going to be gusty throughout the rest of today. So we had that front move through late yesterday. Yes, it did touch off uh, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms well off to the east. Now in behind it, we have not only drier air down here at the surface, but you get this darker shade and then even this sort of brownish shade on here. And this is in the upper levels of the atmosphere. That means the air is just bone dry upstairs in the atmosphere. So what that means is we're going to have those gorgeous, that really deep blue, gorgeous blue sky out there today. Yeah, it's going to be a fantastic day. Open up the windows later on this morning. Humidity, like I said, is quite low. Dew points measure moisture in the atmosphere will start to come up then. Still going to be a nice cool morning tomorrow and then even warmer in the afternoon, even warmer on Thursday and the humidity tries to return here. But then we have another front moving on through here. Um, yes, technically it is a cold front, but and yes, it will knock temperatures down somewhat, but it's not going to be anything like what we had last weekend at all. It'll just take us from above normal readings back down to about normal as far as high temperatures are concerned. This moisture really uh, 
gets kind of scrubbed on out of here as we go in toward the weekend. So with, uh, you know, <laughs> clear skies, no moisture around here. Nothing is going to be going on as far as long range computer models. Maybe a couple of clouds here and there, just a passing cloud here or there. And that front moves through. And as you saw, it doesn't do anything when it comes on through here as far as any rain. We're going to keep a lot of sunshine around here with a cloud or two all the way through the weekend. Then we go into the first part of the week. And, and again, these long range computer models kind of paint things in with a broad brush here, but at least there is a chance for some showers around here, maybe even a couple of th uh, thunderstorm late Monday and even going or Monday and then going into uh, Tuesday as well. So we'll have to keep an eye on that and it's still roughly a, a week away, but at least it is encouraging because between now and then nothing out there and I got to emphasize again that fire danger is going to be on the higher side throughout the rest of this week. So 67 degrees today at noon, uh, sunny skies, breezy conditions, and then high temperature gets up to 78 today. Just a fantastic day. And tomorrow we start off mid 40s all the way up to 82, mid 80s on St. Patrick's Day. Then that front comes in, just kind of trims things a little bit, gets rid of some of the humidity. Great looking weekend setting up and then more humidity later Sunday and hopefully some rain by Monday. May everybody find a pot of gold weather wise mm -hmm. on Thursday. Mm -hmm. It's going to be nice out there. Thank you, Mike. You're green. 520, <laughs> about 55 degrees. And coming up next, a new way to watch a family favorite and a musical tribute to the president of Ukraine. Your pick three numbers this morning, 946 Fireball 6, Daily 4, 2044. Fireball one. And cash five, two, eight, 17, 20, 28. And your Texas two step three, 11, 15, 26. Bonus ball 33. And your Powerball numbers 21, 28, 32, 44, 49. Powerball six, power play three. Good luck. Even if you don't talk about Bruno, you can sing along with Encanto. Disney Plus is launching sing-along versions of Disney musicals featuring on-screen lyrics. The series begins with the award-winning Encanto this Friday. Even like his mother had a talent, Tom has a fantastic talent. All these stories about his mother. She was an inspiration, but she was also a very heavy heritage. The Last Mountain tells the story of mother and son climbers Allison Hargraves and Tom Ballard. Both were elite climbers who met their fates in the Himalayas at almost the same age, three decades apart. The unprecedented documentary, filmed over 25 years, is on digital and VOD now. In a thousand years, will they say your name, or is this all in vain? Can one man save the world? John Andrasik of Five for Fighting has released the song, Can One Man Save the World? dedicated to Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. Andrasik calls Zelensky a modern-day Winston Churchill and says he's in awe of the leader, his wife, and the Ukrainian people. Can One Man Save the World is available on all digital platforms. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time check, 525, about 55 degrees. And you have a child that's planning for college already. There is some good news for parents. Still ahead on GMSA, how one program is being expanded to make college more affordable for local families. And we're continuing to monitor what's left after a major fire just east of downtown that caused a three-story building to collapse. Katrina Weber will join us again after the break with the very latest. And talking down to yourself every once in a while may not seem like a big deal. However, head on GMSA at 6, why negative self-talk could be impacting your health and well-being. An empty building goes up in flames, but that fire also gets a lot of people out of bed very early this morning. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why coming up. Confirmation hearings are set for next week for President Biden's Supreme Court pick, but it does not look like his Federal Reserve nominee is going to make it that far. We'll explain in a few minutes. And taking a look outside with live cam, the good news this week for people who are off, it feels more like spring break should feel, right? 
Right. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is March 15th. Thanks for joining us. I uh, hope you're having a good week so far, especially if you're off, right? Enjoy that time. Yeah, down to 55 right now. And Mike said the little front came through in the overnight hours. Right. And that's the one that touched off a few showers and thunderstorms in some of our eastern counties uh, yesterday evening, last night, and then pulled in some drier air. Just as the humidity was trying to come back in here, it cleared things out. And there's the beautiful, almost just a couple of days away from being full moon. It's going to be full on Friday and it's continuing to set in the western sky there. Absolutely gorgeous. And we are right now at 54 out at the airport. Humidity is very dry. So this number, the dew point measure moisture in the atmosphere went down. Winds out of the northwest out at the airport, just three miles per hour. But in parts of the hill country, we got some uh, fairly decent wind gust about 15, 20 miles per hour. And the wind is going to be picking up throughout the day and with drier. And again, I, I just have to emphasize all morning long. You want to be careful uh, any sort of uh, just avoid in the outdoor burning, even if you're firing up the grill, just watch it this week because dry, breezy conditions and also the ground is very dry. Nothing upstairs in the atmosphere either as far as any moisture. So we're going to have just those intense blue skies today. Mold, ash and oak are all on the low side. Of course, the updated count is going to come out just after seven o'clock this morning. 67 degrees today at noon, 78 for high temperature, which is a just a few degrees above the the normal average high temperature. So yeah, this is what to expect this time of year. It is going to be windy today and then clear skies tonight. Great looking weather the rest of the week. We do have another cold front by name coming on through here. Yeah, it'll trim temperatures off a little bit, but just continue this great weather. Maybe some rain down the road. Talk more about that coming up. Traffic Authority Stevens off this morning. Justin Horn is filling in and anything going on, sir? No, it's actually pretty quiet. And Mike, you mentioned the great weather. It's spring break for some of us this week. So keep in mind places like the zoo, SeaWorld, Six Flags. There's going to be quite a bit of traffic around those areas. So if you're traveling, in the general direction, just know there's going to be traffic uh, around those places. This morning, though, nothing so bad. We, we've got uh, pretty clear sailing here on most of our roads. I-35, Loop 410 looks good there. 35 at Main, uh, not a lot of traffic yet. Starting to pick up some, uh, but nothing that's too heavy that's causing any delays. I-37 at Pecan Valley looking good as well. Here's a look at some of the gas prices. We know that they are high right now. Bear County, $3.96, close to $4 for the Texas average. In the United States, that's not updated, should say over $4. So we know the gas prices are high uh, here in Bear County. We're averaging about $3.96. Looking across the city on our map here, all looks good. If you're coming in from New Braunfels, Castroville, looking good right now there on Highway 90. Uh, no real big delays, and that's good news this morning, guys. Justin, thank you. A knock on the door woke them up and huge flames, no doubt, left them with eyes wide open. People who live just east of downtown had to leave their homes early this morning due to a fire burning next door. That fire at the corner of Center and North Swiss streets is out now. Katrina Weber is live at the scene where fire crews are just now wrapping things up. Katrina, good morning. Was anybody hurt out there? Good morning. No, no injuries. That's the good news. And those people who had to get out of their homes, they're back home right now, most likely back in bed. But firefighters still working here. We actually thought the fire was out for a while, but uh, it looks like they're still putting water on it. It's been smoldering. We've seen some small flames that are sparking up. And so they're just trying to make sure that this fire is out. They had quite a job on their hands, as you'll see in the video that we can show you. Uh, when they arrived around 3 o'clock this morning. Now, just to give you an idea, this, uh, these streets are right near Houston and Cherry. So we're right in the shadows of the Alamo Dome and the Tower of the Americas. Uh, but they, there were flames that were overshadowing everything when firefighters got here. This structure was under construction. Uh, firefighters tell us it was nothing more than really a wooden frame that burned, but a three-story building, we understand, that was under construction. So they found a lot of fire here. They got here and did their best to fight it from the outside because it was starting to collapse when they got here. They did knock down the, the most, of, most of those flames, but again, this thing is still uh, continuing to smolder a bit. And during the height of the fire, they did evacuate about 20 people from the building next door. The firefighters say that there was no damage to that other building. And again, those people all safe and back home right now. Reporting live on the Near East Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, charges may be pending for a dump truck driver involved in a deadly crash yesterday afternoon in New Braunfels. Police there say the crash happened around 3.30 p.m. at the intersection of FM 725 and West Zip Road. The preliminary investigation indicates that a dump truck driver ran a red light and crashed into a pickup truck, causing it to roll over onto the driver's side. The driver of the pickup truck died and has been identified as 84-year-old Antonio Garcia Olvera from New Braunfels. The driver of the dump truck was not injured. It took about three and a half hours for authorities to reopen the roadway in that area. Top stories this morning. Man dead after being shot by police on the west side. And moments later, crowds confronting officers in what was a very tense situation. According to SAPD, a man identified by families, Kevin Johnson, was seen by three officers patrolling the area north of Hamilton and Culebra. Johnson had warrants for assaulting an officer and felon in, a possession, in possession of a firearm. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus says Johnson ran from those officers and at some point pulled a gun from his waistband. That's when officers shot and killed him. Johnson's mother, Arlene Garcia, says their family wants answers. Well, they shot my son from behind, and that's wrong. They shot him nine times, and nobody here has nothing to say to me. Nobody has nothing to say. The three officers involved in the shooting are on administrative duty, which is standard protocol after a situation like this. They remain on leave as the investigation continues and the district attorney reviews the body cam video. Per SAPD's policy, the audio and video will be released 60 days after a critical incident like this one. In your morning headlines, one of President Joe Biden's high-profile nominees appears to be gaining support while a second one is falling flat. His historic Supreme Court pick is set to meet with more senators today ahead of her confirmation hearings next week. However, it looks like a nominee for the Federal Reserve will not make it that far. CNN's Amy Kiley takes a look at what's happening with both women. President Joe Biden is having a mixed week when it comes to his nominees. Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson continues to meet with senators from both parties. A simple majority in their chamber would make her the first black woman on the U.S. Supreme Court. I think one of the most impressive candidates I have ever interviewed and talked to um, that's going to be um, hopefully moving on to the Supreme Court here soon. While Jackson appears to be gaining ground, Sarah Bloom Raskin appears to be losing it. Biden wants her to be the Federal Reserve's top banking regulator. But she previously called for the Fed to crack down on bank lending to fossil fuel companies. She's backtracked since then, but some Republicans are concerned. She has spent two years campaigning for the idea that the Fed should be in the business of allocating capital away from carbon intensive uh, sources of energy. We see what's happening in our own gas prices. Can you imagine having someone at the Fed who thinks we have to make this much worse? Now, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin says he opposes Raskin's nomination. He has financial ties to the coal industry and says he's also worried about her energy ideas. The Biden administration says it's not giving up yet. So where we are now is our focus is on continuing to work with Chairman, uh, Chairman Brown to garner bipartisan support. The White House probably won't get those bipartisan votes since two moderate Republican senators say they also oppose Raskin. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky will speak directly to members of the U.S. Congress tomorrow. Comes amid Russia's deadly invasion of Ukraine. And as Ukraine continues to press President Biden for more assistance as it fights back. In a letter sent to House and Senate members from Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, they reaffirm support for Ukraine. Zelensky is scheduled to give a virtual address to Congress tomorrow around 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock San Antonio time. Russia may soon default, the first time it will have failed to meet its foreign debt obligations in more than a century. Half of Russia's foreign reserves have been frozen by Western sanctions imposed after the invasion of Ukraine. That's about $315 billion credit ratings agencies could likely, would likely consider Russia to be in default if Moscow misses payments. The default could come as early as tomorrow when Moscow needs to hand over a $1,117 million in interest payments on government bonds. There are warnings about a U.S. recession nearing. In addition to sky high oil and gas prices, analysts worried about the flattening of the yield curve. That's the difference between short-term government bond yields and other bond rates. As the spread drops, investors often get concerned that short-term rates will rise above long-term yields. Historically, inverted yield curves often precede recessions as it did in 2000 
2000, 2007, and 2019. However, some Wall Street watchers say the yield curve might currently be a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The flattening of that curve could influence how much of an interest rate hike the Fed announces later this month. And time now is 539 and about 54 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA with gas prices so darn high, a lot of people have had to change their spring break plans. We visit with some people having a bit of a staycation and others who are visiting us because it was a better option financially for them. And going to college could be more affordable for families in our area. How an expanded program is giving more aid to more students. And outside with live cam, Temperature is actually starting to drop now. It was in the upper 50s earlier. We've now dropped down to 54 at last check. Get a forecast from Mike on your Tuesday, the 15th, when we come back. 542, welcome back. College is getting more affordable for many families here in Texas. Yesterday, leaders from the University of Texas board announced it's expanding a program to give more aid to more students. Our Stephanie Jimenez explains how it works. This program is called Promise Plus. It covers 100% of tuition and fees for Texas students who graduate in the top 25% of their class and whose families make just under $70,000 a year. And it probably sounds familiar to you because it's an extension of the Bold Promise program, which started in 2019. 1,700 UTSA students have taken advantage of that tuition program. Now with this program, the UT Board of Regents approved $300 million that will be spread out among seven UT schools and it's going to help thousands more students get the aid they need to not just make college affordable but tuition free. We spoke with a student who was accepted into the Bold Promise program and she says it's a dream come true. I don't think I would be here um, at college in general just because um, I come from a Hispanic household single mother um, first generation student, so not only did I not have the means and the funding to, but I also didn't know very much about the application process. So that's part of why we're going around the state uh, these two weeks to visit campuses, UTSA and its uh, sister campuses across Texas, to make sure that people know that this is available. You know, we found over time that parents and students overestimate the college cost and underestimate what aid's available. We want everyone to know about the region's Promise, Promise Plus programs. So. That's the chancellor of UT saying that the board is on a mission to make sure that as many Texas families know about this as possible. It's worth noting that a lot of this endowment really stays local because about a third of UTSA students who take advantage of the Bold Promise program are from Bear County. At UTSA's downtown campus, Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. 544, 54 degrees. Coming up next, why some out-of-towners decided to spend their spring break here versus some other places they may have thought of. 547, good morning and welcome back to GMSA. Inflation and those higher gas prices are taking a bite out of spring break. It made a dent in a lot of travel plans like heading to the beach, the mountain, or some favorite getaway. Jesse Degollada says for many, those have become staycations and short day trips in a city already known for being tourist friendly. Almost everywhere in Brackenridge Park, there were families on spring break enjoying the perfect weather and the fact they didn't spend a lot of money on gas getting here. I saved so much money than having to go spend, you know, $100 to take a trip somewhere just on the gas alone. You know, because we do drive a big vehicle and it, it does take quite a bit to gas up. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, let's stay close, close to home this spring break. Same for this mother who made Brackenridge Park part of their spring break. Normally we like to go to Port A or to the coast, um, but of course with the high gas prices, yeah. So she says Brackenridge Park will have to do. A family from Orlando here visiting their children's grandfather says actually San Antonio wasn't their first choice. Well, we considered Las Vegas, we considered New York, we considered um, Georgia before coming over here. They say it certainly helped that it was much cheaper to fly here. While this family from Houston drove to San Antonio on a day trip. For her sea world. And my, my parents want to walk around in the, on the river walk. It's very uh, relaxing. The simple pleasures of Brackenridge Park are just some of what visitors say San Antonio has to offer. 
The iconic train ride and the San Antonio Zoo are both nearby, and even locals are getting to play tourist in their own backyard. This family had the Museum, SeaWorld, and Fiesta Texas on their list. I've been going to different places that I hadn't been to, so I've enjoyed it. Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. 549. Go ahead and check in with Justin Horn this morning to see how the roads are looking. Hey there, guys. You just saw Jesse's story. There's going to be some people in town for spring break, so some of those areas may be a little bit congested around the zoo, maybe around SeaWorld. Keep that in mind. As we look at Transguide here, not a lot of issues out there, at least on uh, the main roads, main freeways here around town. We are starting to see a few incidents out there, though, and I want to show you one spot. We're getting a report now of a potential crash around uh, I-10 and Burning Stage Road. Looks like this may be off the main lanes. We'll keep you posted there. So far, we're not seeing any slowdowns from this, but we'll try to get some more information. We also have a report of a crash, uh, Stone Oak Parkway and Hardy Oak Boulevard. That may be causing a few slowdowns there too at that intersection. We'll try to get some more information on that as well. We'll continue to keep you posted throughout the morning as the morning commute picks up, guys. Thank you, Justin. Not too bad. If you're traveling west, you know, you have sunglasses heading east in the sunshine. Do you have moon glasses? I mean, the, for the moonshine? <laughs> you, you might this morning. Or Look at least. that. Wouldn't it be weird to put the visor down at 5.50 <laughs> in the morning? <laughs> and I, I'm kidding, us. obviously. With the, but yeah, I mean, that's just gorgeous. It almost looks like the sun out there. The moon is just a couple of days from full. It'll be full on Friday. But yeah, absolutely beautiful, beautiful. And, you know, going back to, to Jesse's story about heading out to uh, the zoo, or even though it is pretty crowded out there and they have all the, you know, streets barricaded off and everything and from ways you have to travel around, but even heading out to a park this week because the afternoons are going to be so sensational since the humidity is not going to be uh, too awfully um, oppressive this week. 54 right now and mid 50s in the hill country. We started off in the low 60s just a couple of hours ago and that front moved through, of course, late last night. Did touch off a couple of showers, a couple of uh, thunderstorms well off to the east and now it's pulling in the drier air. So we'll continue to cool down a bit more over the next uh, couple of hours. 82 yesterday, Pleasanton got up to 88 and right on the door of 90 down around Catula over in Del Rio today down just a couple of degrees just because that front had moved on through here. It's only a really a cold front by name, uh, but and yes, it is trimming temperatures a, a few degrees, so we'll be in the upper 70s, low 80s around the area today and absolutely fantastic. In the next couple of days tomorrow, uh, it's jacket weather in the morning and then t-shirts in the afternoon. We'll be back into the 80s, mid 80s on Thursday. The low temperature won't be as low and that's an indication that the humidity is trying to come back into the picture but notice how we got dropped back down in the 40s by friday morning and stay in the mid 70s so there's another front moving on through but the problem is there's no moisture associated with it so it is not going to be dew points will start to come up somewhat but this thing is just going to unfortunately come through dry again and then we get the dew points to drop down significantly into Friday and Saturday so notwithstanding the fact we could use some rain we've got some spectacular weather all the way through the weekend by later Sunday it does look like we'll start to see uh, somewhat of a return of the moisture and enough to hopefully support some showers by the first part of next week. So here's what's going on in upper level winds. There's the low that moved through too far up to the north of us to really do anything for us. It, it has been producing some uh, pretty good showers and thunderstorms off to the east of us and off to the north. So that's what's pulling in the drier air in behind it. We get this very tranquil pattern going into the rest of the week. Here's the next front, which is going to move through here. All the activities too far to the north to really do anything around here. And then a tranquil pattern going into the weekend. Then that next low is starting to develop. And this is the one now some indications right now it may stay further up to the north, but this is the one that is is going to keep your fingers crossed, hopefully give us a chance for some rain by Monday and then into Tuesday of next week. Still a week away, a lot can change. Something encouraging right now. 67 at noon today, sunny, breezy, and it's going to be windy today. Even though nothing formally is posted, just be careful if you're fired up the grill because uh, the windy and dry conditions out there. 78 high temperature today, tomorrow, another jacket morning, and then a t-shirt in the afternoon flip flops and shorts and same thing on Thursday and all the way really through the weekend. Cool mornings, beautiful days, windy again on Friday too. All right. Thank you, Mike. 553 on your Tuesday morning. We'll be right back. 
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we'll have the latest from the ground in Ukraine. Fighting inching closer to the capital, Kyiv, another American journalist injured covering the war. And we'll hear exclusively from Ukraine's first lady speaking out from a secret location, sharing her message for Vladimir Putin. That and so much more right here on GMA. Heads up, folks, tomorrow is the last day to enter the KSAT Porch Parade contest as we get ready for Fiesta to decorate, just decorate the door of your home, classroom, or office. Really encouraging schools to get involved this right now. Uh, take a picture of it, submit it to KSAT.com. The KSAT Porch Parade Party will be live on March 25th from, I believe it's now 7 to 8 o'clock. We'll try to update the times for you prior to kickoff of Fiesta, which is on the 31st. That didn't change. More information about this is on our website at ksat.com. There is much more ahead on GMSA this morning. Breaking news overnight. The woman who inspired the Netflix series Inventing Anna has been deported. That happened in the overnight hours. We'll have details. And overnight, a building under construction over on the east side of town goes up in flames. Katrina Weber, staying on top of this story, joins us with a live report. And Justin is handling traffic duties this morning. 281 at Hildebrand, 90 at 36th Street. Things are looking pretty good right now. We'll see if anything else has developed over the next two or three minutes. And we'll talk to Mike about your forecast. A little front came through overnight. Arson investigators will be taking a close look at what's left of a building that was under construction. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That building burned to the ground early this morning. I'll tell you more about it. New fears of a widening war in Ukraine. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, a look at the damage caused in civilian areas. When's the last time you actually bought a CD? We'll tell you why sales of CDs have gone up in a world of streaming. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting in the 50s, kind of chilly, but it's going to warm up to a beautiful afternoon. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, rise and shine. It is Tuesday the 15th. Thanks for joining us this morning. And maybe the time change won't feel as bad because the afternoons are going to be really pretty this week. That's right. Now, here's the weird thing. When we got in this morning for work, it was uh, mid to upper 50s. And yes. now we've been slowly sliding yeah. over the last uh, 90 minutes or so, Mike. Yeah, that front moved through late last night. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we were actually in the, the wee hours this morning. Even before y'all came in, it was in the 60s. And so we've been dropping down. We'll continue to drop down with the dry air that's moved on in here. And yes, it is. You know, like you said, it's easier to take the time change when you have this gorgeous weather and you yes. can spend it outside. And yes, open up the windows, uh, enjoy it. We've got lots of clear skies, as is evident from the fact that we can see the moon, which is just a couple of days away from being full, as it is starting to slowly sink in the western sky right there. Absolutely gorgeous. We're not down to 52 degrees out there at the airport and uh, 50 in Kerrville, 53 Seguin. Yeah, really pleasant. This is what you would expect this time of year. The average normal low temperature, if you will. Mold, ash, and oak are all on the low side. The updated count is going to be coming out in about an hour, hour and a half or so. And temperatures will, uh, you know, stay right around low 50s, maybe some upper 40s this morning. And then we'll warm up very quickly throughout the course of the morning, make it up to 67 at noon. Plenty of sunshine. Wind is going to pick up. It's kind of breezy in places right now. And we're going to see enough of a breeze out there later on today. And then high temperatures will make it in the upper 70s down just a couple of notches from yesterday but fantastic weather notwithstanding the fact that we desperately need rain there's really nothing in the forecast there's not really but there's nothing in the forecast throughout the rest of the week and the weekend but we have got some fantastic weather all the details coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Stevens off today Justin Horn is driving the car this morning yeah thank you Mike let's uh, take a look at some of the trans guide shots we've got uh, pretty quiet conditions as far as traffic goes on most of our freeways, but a couple crashes that we need to report to you, and uh, we'll take a look at those on the map. That's 410 and Parent Bottle again. Most freeways look good at this point, 410 and Evers. But as we look at the, uh, the map here, we do have a couple of issues. One is up here way north side, I-10 Bernie Stage Road. From what I can tell, this crash is off the main lanes and on Bernie Stage Road, but if your commute includes Bernie Stage Road, you know there's going to be some slowdowns here and there is uh, some activity going on with that crash. In addition, we have another crash being reported at uh, Stone Oak Parkway and Hardy Oak Boulevard. 
This may be causing some slowdowns too. They here along Stone Oak Parkway, especially as commuters get going this morning. So uh, be aware of that. Those are the two incidents that we have at this hour. Otherwise, again, the freeways are in good shape. Traffic will start picking up here soon as we get into the heart of the morning commute. Uh, some schools off for spring breaks, so they'll help a little with some of the congestion, but should things pick up and they, it will, uh, we'll keep you posted on how things are looking. Guys. Thank you, Justin. A fire that broke out just east of downtown is going to get a close look from arson investigators. A building that was still under construction burned to the ground early this morning. It's at the corner of Center and North Swiss Streets. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Do firefighters believe this fire was suspicious, Katrina? Well, they haven't told us that at this point. Uh, they said this is still under investigation. What they have said is that this was really just a wooden frame of a building, and so there were no working utilities here at all. Firefighters found a working fire when they arrived around 3 this morning inside a building that they say was still under construction. This is on Center Street, not far from East Houston and Cherry Streets. They could only attack the fire from the outside because part of the structure uh, was starting... Parts of the structure were starting to collapse. There was a concern that the flames might spread to an occupied building across the street. So firefighters woke up the people in that building and got them out. About 20 people in all evacuated. And later they were allowed back inside their building, which was not damaged. Now the fire took down some power lines in this area. They're still dangling here in the streets. And we've had CPS energy workers out here uh, trying to make sure that they're off and also to remove them from the street so that traffic can come through here again. But uh, no injuries reported as a result of this fire or the downed power lines. Reporting live on the Near East Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A man from New Braunfels who is a former Judson ISD police officer has been convicted for making threats against then presidential candidate Joe Biden. 55 year old William Towery faces up to five years in prison, plus supervised release and fines. This stems from an incident in December of 2019. Court documents reveal Towery had responded to a text message regarding a campaign rally where Biden was to attend. Sentencing is set for July 13th. President Joe Biden is having a mixed week when it comes to his nominees. Judge Katanji Brown Jackson continues to meet with senators from both parties. A simple majority in their chamber would make her the first black woman on the U.S. Supreme Court. Biden wants Sarah Bloom Raskin to be the Federal Reserve's top banking regulator. However, she previously called for the Fed to crack down on banks lending to fossil fuel companies. She has since backtracked. However, some Republicans are still concerned. And now Democratic Senator Joe Manchin says he opposes Raskin's nomination. Now to the expanding war in Ukraine. You're taking a live look right now at Kyiv, where it is 1.06 in the afternoon. Russian troops on the ground appear to have stalled. The Russian army now relying pretty much solely on airstrikes. And this morning, more devastating missile attacks on civilians and apartment buildings. This as the Biden administration contemplates severe consequences for Russia's actions. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the latest. Good morning. Officials say these airstrikes targeting civilians in Ukraine are meant to cause as much terror as possible. Still, Ukrainian resistance appears to be holding. This morning, a widening war in Ukraine. The city of Mariupol, under siege and without power and little food for over a week, was targeted by Russian airstrikes. Officials say over 2,000 people have been killed here. And in Kyiv, a rocket intercepted, crashing into the city street, killing at least one person and injuring six others. In a suburb, another person dead after officials say a Russian shell hit this residential building. A senior U.S. official warning the city of Lviv could be the next target. Russians believe it's being used as a staging ground for Western military aid to Ukraine. Meanwhile, the economic sanctions putting a squeeze on Russia. A U.S. official confirming to ABC News that the Kremlin reached out to China for military equipment, with China said to be considering the request, though Beijing denies it. We will ensure that no country uh, is... Uh, able to get away with such a thing. A fourth round of peace talks between Russia and Ukraine was held virtually with another call expected today. And the International Court of Justice will rule tomorrow on war crime allegations brought against Russia by Ukraine. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington.
In your morning consumer headlines, the Federal Reserve getting ready to start its two-day March meeting tomorrow. And by the end, interest rates will almost certainly get the first of what could be several hikes this year in an effort to slow down inflation. But the added weight of the war in Ukraine has some economists worried rate hikes could tip the economy towards recession. One thing that's been driving higher prices, the rising cost of fuel. You know that. Some relief, though, may, may be on the way with oil prices sliding. A barrel of U.S. crude now below $100 a barrel after hitting $130 last week. Stock markets in China, Australia, and South Korea were also trading lower overnight. Right now, over on KSAT.com, we want to know how the rising fuel costs are impacting you and your family's lives here in San Antonio. You can take our quick 10-minute question survey, mostly multiple choice, to help us build our news coverage around your needs. In today's Tech Bytes, Twitter is reversing a change to its home feed after backlash from users. The change implemented a week ago prioritized showing users popular tweets instead of tweets appearing in chronological order. Users immediately voiced their disapproval. Twitter responded with a message saying, we heard you. Apple is adapting to the pandemic era. Its latest software update allows you to unlock your iPhone with your face without having to remove your mask. Better now, late than ever, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know that would have been helpful a year ago. Now, once the new operating system is installed, the mask feature for Face ID will have to be activated manually. And who needs streaming technology when CDs are still around? The recording industry says CD sales were up 21% last year. So that's the first increase since 2004. Now, the reopening of record stores and CD sales at concerts are among some of the reasons for that jump. Yeah, I remember as the pandemic was getting going, we were hearing the developers, especially like Apple, were going to develop a way for us to open our phones with yes. our masks on. <laughs> and now here we are they're coming out of the pandemic, and it's finally here. Well, let's just hope we don't need that. I okay. hope so, too. <laughs> let's be hopeful, right? Mm -hmm. 610, about 54 degrees. And it was a high scoring game for our San Antonio Spurs here at home last night. However, they came up a little short of that victory. We're going to have the highlights and a look ahead at their next game. And just ahead, we've seen a drop in coronavirus cases across the country. Could we be in store for another potential spike? We'll tell you what some experts are saying. And taking a look outside with live cam, we started at about 58 this morning. Now we're at 54 degrees, so a little cool out there, but things will warm up in the afternoon. We'll be right back. And now turning to new concerns about COVID, the Omicron subvariant is on the rise. It's already causing some problems overseas. The question now is, does the U.S. need to worry? ABC's Ike Jachi has the latest. This morning, new warning signs that the U.S. could be on the brink of a COVID resurgence. The CDC reporting more than one-third of its wastewater sampling sites have seen a spike in coronavirus in the last two weeks. We've been watching it closely, of course. Uh, we currently have about 35,000 cases in this country. We expect some fluctuation, especially at this relatively low level, and certainly that to increase. Experts suggest the U.S. could follow Europe in seeing a major increase in cases of the Omicron subvariant known as BA2, or Stealth Omicron. In the U.K., BA2 now accounts for more than 50% of cases. In the U.S., that number is only about 10%, but with BA2 spreading faster than Omicron, that percentage is likely to rise. We're probably about three or four weeks behind the UK. So while the UK is seeing a bump up of infections right now, we'll get further into our spring before we start to see that happen here. The warnings come just days after Congress stripped $15 billion in COVID funding from a spending bill. The White House says as a result, testing capacity could drop significantly in the coming weeks and supplies of COVID related drugs could run low. In China, the BA2 variant is already behind the worst COVID outbreak in two years, with 51 million people now in lockdown. And manufacturing in a major tech hub shut down, prompting fears of more global supply chain delays. China has a population that's very vulnerable to this new variant, and they haven't deployed vaccines that are very effective against this particular variant. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, 616. And we saw some flashing lights out there at I-10 and Bernie Stage Road. Let's go ahead and check with Justin Horn. 
Hey there, guys. Yeah, we are watching a crash on I-10 Bernie Stage Road. Good news here is it's off the main lane, so it's not affecting traffic there on I-10 itself. But if you're traveling on Bernie Stage, this intersection here, this is the service road of I-10 and a Bernie Stage Road here, and this is uh, headed southbound, or I should say eastbound on I-10. Uh, you can see they're already about picking up the car here, the uh, the wreckers. So this should be cleared here fairly soon. This is causing a few delays there along Bernie Stage Road. As we look at the big picture, we've got a uh, fairly clear conditions, smooth sailing at this hour for most of the freeways here in town. Uh, we did detect that one crash, as we said, I-10 Bernie Stage Road, but we also uh, have reports of another crash here along uh, Stone Oak Parkway and Hardy Oak Boulevard that may be causing a few delays as well. And as we go back to the uh, trans guide here, there is that one shot again of I-10 and Bernie Stage, but we're uh, also seeing uh, one stall uh, here along 410 as well. Uh, this is 410 in San Pedro. You can see the stalled car there. It doesn't look like it's causing that much in delays, but just be aware uh, that stall there is uh, on the shoulder there at 410. Guys. Right, near Bernie stage accident, that's on the Walmart HEB side. You can see Walmart kind of in the distance there. Exactly. All right, thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. And uh, a lot of kids are on spring break, but some are headed to school, so a light jacket would be ideal. Yeah, light jacket won't need in the afternoon, and that's going to be the case the, the rest of the week. And yeah, just can't kind of beat this weather because we have very low humidity out there. And is my little bus not going to come in here for me? Oh, come on. Well, darn it all. See, the bus is even the bus is even avoiding it. The bus is on spring break. So take a look at this uh, KSAC Connect picture from yesterday. This is over at SeaWorld looking off to the east, and those were some of those thunderstorms that then started to uh, develop. Those clouds just uh, really billowed up there in the, in the afternoon, and then we did get a few uh, thunderstorms. They were very few and far between, however, and they didn't uh, last all that long and continued to work their way off to the south and east. And the moon is just about to or maybe has set right now. Was that was that it? Yeah, right there. Yep. Wow. Right there. It's not glowing as much as it as it was before. That's it. I thought that was just kind of a, a reflection or something. But anyway, it's going to continue to uh, set. Moon's going to be full on Friday. We have in behind that front that moved through yesterday. Wind coming in here out of the northwest at about um, 10, 5, 10 miles per hour. But then some gusts on top of that. 15 mile per hour wind gusts at uh, Lost Maples. Not too bad, but it is going to be on the breezier side throughout the day today. And as far as the humidity, of course, it started to come back up a little bit. It really wasn't that oppressive yesterday, but in the afternoon you could kind of kind of feel a little bit more humidity. Now it has really dropped down and the humidity is going to stay very low for the next couple of days with this dry air being pumped in here on these northwesterly winds. So that's the situation tomorrow. Then we go into Thursday and in the morning hours, Humidity is going to come up, so it won't be quite as cool in the morning. Still jacket weather, and then we really warm up. That's going to be the warmest day on Thursday. Then another front's going to be moving on through here. Here's the satellite radar picture going back 12 hours, and there's some of those thunderstorms that did develop that uh, that live or the um, KSAC Connect picture looked at off to the east. But then again, that moved on out of here very quickly. That's going to produce. Uh, Still some storms off to the east of us, but then off to the west. That's what's in store for the next couple of days. Really nothing. There is another front that's going to move through here late Thursday night into Friday. It's not even going to do what it did last night. We will have temperatures drop down a couple of degrees after a warm up. It'll get rid of some of the humidity and that'll be it. It's not going to produce any rain. We may have some rain down the road. More on that in a second. 67 degrees today at noon. Sunny, breezy, gorgeous day. Open up the windows today and then a high temperature up to 78. So down just a couple of notches from where we were yesterday. Open up the windows. Beautiful afternoon. Get out and enjoy it. Take a nice little drive, go to a park around town. 82 for a high temperature tomorrow, starting off at 45. Again, need a jacket in the morning, not in the afternoon. 84. The warm day is going to be on St. Patty's Day, and then that front moves on through here. It will trim temperatures somewhat, but still, we're in the range of normal, and good looking weekend is setting up more humidity later on Sunday. And as of right now, we do have some rain chances to start off next week. That's good, though. Yeah, you know. I, still a week away, okay. but you know, got to got to kind of <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. But at least there is that chance of rain. All right, on. we'll take it, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Six twenty, about fifty-four degrees, and a big victory for the family of the late actor Bob Saget. That's ahead in your GMA first look.
think you are? Canceling plans? Commanding a room? Being your own biggest fan? Who said you could do that? Take up space. Make a scene. Indulge yourself. Who said you could say no? Emphatically. Unapologetically. No to settling. No to compromising. Yes to getting all of the above. And doing only what you want to do? Who? No, really. Tell us. Who do you think you are? Oh, that's right. You're you. And TJ Maxx is where you can afford to be you to the max. And welcome back at 624. It's been a little over two months since actor Bob Saget was found dead in an Orlando hotel. Now, a Florida judge has ruled that photos or video footage of Saget's death cannot be released to the media. ABC's Will Reeve has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a big legal victory for Saget's family. A Florida judge ruling that no photos or body camera footage of his sudden death can be released to media outlets. We have an unresponsive guest in a room. My officer is telling me that there's no pulse. Bob Saget was found unresponsive in his hotel room hours after performing a stand-up comedy set in Orlando. The Orange County Medical Examiner determining that Saget died of a head injury, likely Daddy. sustained in a fall. The Saget family saying they're grateful that the judge granted their request for an injunction to preserve Bob's dignity as well as their privacy rights, especially after suffering this unexpected and tragic loss. I do believe that is the best outcome to protect his family and protect their privacy interests. And we'll have much more on what this ruling means coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. Our Spurs taking on Minnesota at home last night would turn into a high-scoring matchup. Both offenses came to play in the first quarter and never looked back. DeJounte Murray, Kelvin Johnson, Yaka Pertle all back on the court for San Antonio. But the Timberwolves' Carl Anthony Towns just could not be stopped. He scored a record-breaking 60 points last night. Spurs lose this one 149-139 and fall the 26-43 and on the season. They try to bounce back tomorrow night against the visiting Oklahoma City Thunder. That's set for 7 30 at the AT&T Center. Okay, we got this. Tomorrow, go Spurs go. Time now, 626 and about 53 degrees out there. Ahead in our next half hour, do you ever talk down to yourself? Turns out that may have a bigger impact on your health than you realize. We'll tell you what experts are saying. And Katrina Weber is staying on top of an overnight fire at a building under construction on the city's east side. She's going to join us live with the very latest. A building that was being put up has come crumbling down due to an overnight fire. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. This morning, the convicted con artist portrayed in the hit Netflix series Inventing Anna has been deported out of the U.S. We have details. And the war in Ukraine is expanding and we're seeing more airstrikes carried out by Russian forces. We're going to have the latest in Eastern Europe. And here at home outside with live cam, we were fairly warm when we arrived at work this morning, but temperatures, temperatures have been slowly dropping since we got here. We'll talk to Mike about that little cool front that moved through. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, the 15th of March. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. I hope those of you who are on spring break are enjoying this weekend. Those of you who are not, at least you have nice weather. That's true. Mike's here with more on that and potential rain chances down the road. Way down the road. Obviously, we could use some. We don't have anything between now and probably about this time next week. So one thing got to emphasize just uh, with windy dry conditions that we're going to have around here. Fire danger is going to be on the higher side. So if you are even, you know, light up the grill in the back, here, just really, really watch it, especially in portions of the hill country. All right, we are waiting for the sun to uh, start to 
bring the glow over the horizon there. Sun's not going to come up for about another hour and 15 minutes with the time change, obviously, but it's going to be gorgeous like the moon set was. 52 right now, dew points at 32, so we've got some pretty dry air out there. Wind is shifted around to the northwest, and in places, it is somewhat breezy, so we are going to have a, a decent breeze throughout the rest of today. Even upstairs in the atmosphere, we have got some bone dry air. When you get that darker shade on there, that's really dry air. And then you get this sort of uh, kind of brownish rusty colored shade that means we're going to have some beautiful that really intense deep blue sky out there today it's going to be gorgeous today mold ash and oak are all on the low side and the updated count is going to be coming out in about uh, 45 minutes or so an hour and throughout the rest of today we are going to have temperatures that are going to be making it into the upper 60s by noon and then we'll make it into the uh, mid to upper 70s later on today maybe down just a couple of notches as compared to yesterday we warm up the next few days another cold front is going to move down through here What's that going to do with temperatures and what's ahead for the weekend? Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stevens off today. Justin Horn, what's going on, sir? You still got those big problems? Uh, not right now, Mike. Actually, things have improved. That that accident or that crash that we had at I-10 and Bernie Stage has cleared, so everything looks good there. We do still have a stall at 410 in San Pedro. We can see that here on Transguide. It's not causing any issues, though. It is off on the shoulder. You may have to slow down if you're uh, passing by this, uh, this incident here, 410 San Pedro. But so far... Uh, again, no real big issues here on 410. One that passed along gas prices, they are pretty brutal right now. The Bear County average is uh, $3.96. The average across Texas is close to $4. And for the United States, we're talking $4.32. Uh, uh, so they are still fairly high. And as we look across uh, the city here, not a lot of issues. We, we were seeing uh, that report of a crash, but again, that has cleared. So that'll get off the map here soon. We did have one more incident being reported here at uh, I-10 in Fresno. This looks to be on a shoulder too, so isn't causing any uh, real big delays here along I-10. As morning wears on, we expect maybe a few more issues and we'll be uh, watching it closely for you guys. Thank you, Justin. Fires taken down a building that was in the process of going up in a neighborhood just east of downtown. It burned to the ground early this morning at the corner of Center and North Swiss Streets. And that's not far from East Houston. Katrina Weber is live where it all happened. And as we've seen all morning, the fire has continued to smolder. Is that happening now? Well, we can still see a little bit of wispy smoke rising up, but as far as I can tell, the fire is out. The last fire crews left just within the last five minutes. Now, they told us that this was really just a wooden frame of the building, and that's why there was so much fuel to burn. They got a chance to see that fire in full bloom when they arrived around 3 o'clock this morning. The whole building was engulfed in flames. This construction site is on Center Street, not far from East Houston and Cherry, right in the shadow of the Alamo Dome. According to the Internet, it was going to be a complex of loft apartments. About 20 people in the apartment building across the street had to leave their homes during the height of the fire. There was a fear that their building also was in danger, but they were allowed to go back home later and no one was hurt. The fire did cause some power lines to come down. And right now we have crews from CPS Energy that have been going around just making sure that those power lines are off and uh, also making the repairs that are needed here this morning so that they can uh, put those back up and reopen the street. Reporting live east of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. Some other top stories we're following this morning. A man is dead after being shot by police on the west side. A moments later, crowds confronted officers in what turned into a tense situation. Now, according to police, a man identified by family as Kevin Johnson was seen by three officers patrolling the area of North and Hamilton and Caliber Road. Now, Johnson had warrants for assaulting an officer and felon in possession of a firearm. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus says Johnson ran from officers and at some point pulled a gun from his waistband. That's when officers shot and killed him. Johnson's mother, Arlene Garcia, says their family just wants answers. I know they shot my son from behind and that's wrong. They shot him nine times and nobody here has nothing to say to me. Nobody has nothing to say. 
The three officers involved in that shooting are on administrative duty, which is protocol after a situation like this one. They will remain on leave as the investigation continues and the district attorney reviews the body camera video. Now, per SAPD's policy, the audio and video will be released 60 days after a critical incident like this one. Charges may be pending for a dump truck driver involved in a deadly crash yesterday afternoon up in New Braunfels. Police there say it happened around 3.30 in the afternoon at the intersection of FM 725 in West Zip Road. According to early reports, a dump truck driver ran a red light and crashed into a pickup truck, causing it to roll over. The driver of the pickup died at the scene, has been identified as 84-year-old Antonio Garcia Olvera from New Braunfels. The driver of the dump truck was not injured. It took about three and a half hours for authorities to reopen the roadway in that area. And crews still working to figure out what sparked a grass fire on the far west side of town. This happened just before 5 p.m. yesterday. Sky 12 flew over that scene as flames spread near Tally Road and Cartwright Trail outside of 1604. Now about 30 acres were involved, but as of last night, crews had managed to get the flames about 90% contained. No homes were destroyed and there are no reports of any injuries. Of the top stories we're following this morning, new overnight, a suspect arrested in connection with the shootings of five homes homeless men in New York and Washington, D.C. Authorities say the shootings were carried out by a single suspect and took place between March 3rd and 12th. Two men died in those shootings. Other details are limited, but we believe the arrest took place in D.C. More updates as more information becomes available. And also new overnight, the man accused of stabbing two employees inside the Museum of Modern Art in New York City has been arrested in Philadelphia. Authorities say Gary Cabana hopped over a counter at the museum and attacked a man and woman with a knife Saturday. Despite a citywide search, he wasn't found until Monday night in Philadelphia sleeping in a Greyhound bus station. No word yet on a possible motive for the museum incident. The two victims are in stable condition. Now to the expanding war in Ukraine. You're taking a live look at the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv right now. And as the conflict there continues, the Russian army appears to be relying more on airstrikes. Two buildings in residential parts of Kyiv were hit by separate airstrikes early Tuesday. A private home in district east of the city was hit by shelling. A fire broke out in a two-story building but was quickly extinguished. No casualties were reported. And shortly after that, a 10-story apartment building was hit in another strike, sparking a fire in the bottom five floors of that building. At least one person was taken to the hospital. And Ukrainian President Zelensky will speak directly to U.S. Congress members tomorrow as Ukraine continues to press President Biden for more assistance as it fights back. In a letter sent to House and Senate members from Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Majority Leader Chuck Schumer that reaffirmed support for Ukraine. Zelensky is scheduled to give a virtual address to Congress tomorrow around 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. our time. Now turning to the coronavirus as if the pandemic didn't leave families vulnerable enough. Now spiking food and gas prices are causing some tough decisions to be made. Fill up the car to get to work or buy groceries. That's why free school programs are more important than ever. During the pandemic, waivers were granted to feed hungry kids at school, but those will soon expire in June. Teachers, parents and advocates hope they will be extended considering rising costs and supply chain issues are hurting families financially. We're going to have a lot of hungry kids, a lot of kids that aren't feeling secure. Um, food is security for them, right? So they, you, you can't learn without food in your belly. You can't grow without food in your belly. Advocates with organizations like No Kid Hungry Texas have been pushing Congress to extend those free school food waivers through the USDA. And get ready to pay more for rides on Lyft. The rideshare company says it plans to add an additional fee to help drivers pay for gas. Now, the company hasn't said exactly how much that surcharge will be. However, Uber announced a similar fee last week. Lyft's largest competitor surcharge will be 45 or 55 cents per trip, depending on location. The only exception is New York City, where there is no additional charge. Right now, gas is at the highest price it has ever been. Now to an update on the woman who inspired the Netflix show Inventing Anna. Immigration authorities deported her overnight. It comes as the series portrays her past life, allegedly scamming her way into a life of luxury. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details. This morning, the convicted con artist portrayed in the hit Netflix series Inventing Anna has been deported. She is everything that is wrong with America right now. 
hey, I'm famous. Immigration authorities placing Anna Sorokin on a flight to Germany last night, saying she overstayed her visa. But Sorokin's lawyer claims the appeals process for a new visa isn't over yet. My basic understanding of immigration law is that we had until the 19th of this month to file an appeal because I hadn't spoken to Ms. Sorkin this afternoon, which is typically our practice as we've gotten closer to this deadline. Uh, I was a bit concerned that she may have been deported. Sorokin spent nearly four years in prison after posing as a German heiress, claiming she had a $60 million bank account, allowing her to live a life of luxury, flying on private jets, staying in boutique hotels, and dressing in designer fashion. But prosecutors say it was all an act, allowing her to cheat banks and businesses out of more than a quarter million dollars. Sorokin was convicted of theft of services, grand larceny, and attempted grand larceny. She spoke to ABC's Deborah Roberts last year. I feel like I'm just trying to deal with with, uh, with consequences of my actions. Um, I was young, I would not repeat my actions. Sorokin's life after prison was financed partly by that Netflix series on her life. The streaming service reportedly paid her more than $300,000 for the rights to her story. Many people would find that very strange, that you had gotten into trouble, you went to trial, you went to prison, and there's a Netflix deal around your story? I find it strange too. And there's another legal battle involving Sorokin. She's among a group suing U.S. immigration officials after getting COVID while in custody. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Time check, 642, 53 degrees. Talking down to yourself here or there may seem harmless. However, in reality, it can be detrimental to your self-esteem. How to stop it right after the break. Quarter to seven, negative self-talk may seem harmless, but a study published in June of 2020 by the Alzheimer's and Dementia Journal linked negative thought patterns to brain changes that could be associated with developing Alzheimer's. Older adults who were more likely to engage in negative thinking were more likely to experience cognitive decline. I'm so stupid. Everybody's smarter than me here. Why would I say something so idiotic? So get this, 80% of people's thoughts per day are negative. Negative self-talk can affect our mental and physical health by impacting our weight, control, and stress management. According to a Harvard study, there are 10 types of negative self-talk, pinpointing the negative event that happened and not letting yourself be forgiven for it is the running theme. So how do we put a stop to it? I think that's really the wrong question. The right question is, why is it here? Negative self-talk is a symptom. So there's something else going on deep in the psyche that's driving that symptom to the surface, emerging as negative self -talk. So identify what you need to change when your inner voice chimes in. Give yourself time to allow the thoughts. Then move on to a new task to get your mind off of them. And talk to yourself the way you would encourage a friend. And don't think less of yourself, but think of yourself less. Practicing affirmations help rejects the pattern of negative self-talk. Try writing your affirmations on sticky notes and posting them in places you frequent like the uh, bathroom or bedroom mirror. You can also limit your social media and take stock of how you are growing in small ways every day. Let's take stock of our morning commute at 647. How are things looking, Justin? Well, not as good as they were earlier. We've got several incidents now underway. One bigger one that I want to talk about at 410 and Houston Street. So this is on the east side. We've got two, what looks like two crashes here. So one on the northbound side that is causing some slowdowns. And then also one here on the Cloverleaf at I-10 and 410 there on the, the city's east side. So these two things combined are causing some pretty big slowdowns. Traffic is backed up here to I-10. If you're traveling northbound on 410, there's going to be some slow going here through this area. And I believe there's some construction, too, on top of all of that. So slowdowns there. Again, this is uh, 410 north and southbound, it looks like at this point, near I-10 on the city's east side. We also do have an accident. Uh, there on the shoulder at uh, I-10 in Fresno that is now starting to cause some slowdowns. And we can see that here on Transguide. Uh, it does look to be off maybe uh, in the far lane there and then on the shoulder. Uh, folks having to slow down a little bit, although traffic still looks fine at this point as uh, you're coming inbound to uh, downtown there on I-10. We're still trying to get eyes on that uh, 410 incident, but we'll keep you posted there. Again, a lot of slowdowns there. And we're also seeing some slowdowns now, 6 4 and Hausman Road 
a place that typically gets congested, but this looks like it's backed up pretty far. So we'll see what's going on there as well. Things starting to really pick up here, Mike, as uh, we get this morning commute underway. Yeah, that's westbound out there at 1604. Yeah, maybe that's I'm sorry, that, eastbound, eastbound. Yeah, maybe that's some of that construction out there too. Mm -hmm. so. All right, uh, am I seeing things or is the glow of the morning uh, sunrise starting to show up a little bit there? Off that's, just that's a 50 50 observation, Mike. Yeah. It could be you, but it could also be the beginning of the sunrise. Yeah, plenty of uh, traffic out there on 410 over there by the airport looking off to the east. 52 in town, 49 now in Kerrville. These numbers are pretty close to what you would expect this time of year. The normals, the average low temperatures and humidity is also very low. We had the front move through, so what? slight gain in the humidity we had yesterday. That's gone away and that's going to continue to stay on the low side, which means it's going to be a wonderful day. Open up the windows. We'll get up into the upper 70s later on today, some low 80s, but just really, really comfortable out there. And then it's going to cool off fairly quickly overnight. We'll be back down to jacket weather again tomorrow morning, maybe even a little bit cooler than this morning. And as we go on through the day, Wednesday, tomorrow in through Thursday, we start to see the humidity come back in here. But before it can really kind of invade the area and get a firm hold. We have yet another front that's going to be moving on through here. So what that will do is more humidity on Thursday morning. We have the low temperatures that stay in the mid 50s around here. The front comes through. It's not going to be this huge Arctic blast, but it will just Again, get rid of some of the humidity that allows temperatures to get somewhat lower. So we'll be back down into the uh, primarily upper 40s as we go in through most of the weekend. And then humidity makes a return by the start of next week. And then as far as the high temperatures, same thing. We continue to warm up mid 80s by Thursday. And then that front moves through. Yes, it will trim temperatures off slightly back down to roughly normal readings. And then there's that slow increase in temperatures going in toward the end of the weekend, as well as the first part of next week. One thing interesting interesting around the country right now with just a couple of exceptions there's uh what a handful of numbers below freezing right now. Even International Falls is above freezing. Usually, even yesterday, uh, had some single digits and negative numbers up around there. So it looks like the really, really cold stuff is continuing to sort of edge its way back further up to the north as spring starts to move on in here. All right, 67 today at noon, sunny, breezy. Good looking day. Great day jacket this morning. You won't need it uh, by noon and then this afternoon. Obviously not 78 degrees high temperature Again, windy conditions. So got to emphasize you got to watch out with the windy dry conditions. Haven't had any rain in who knows when it seems like uh, watch out high fire danger the rest of the week basically because we'll have another windy day uh, breezy enough tomorrow windy on Friday temperatures try to warm up uh, mid 80s Thursday cool down slightly if you want to call that a cool down just mm -hmm. not as warm <laughs> and then great looking weekend in store so beautiful the rest of this week make some outdoor plans just yeah. go for a walk even just to open up the windows oh definitely have to get outside this week yep. yes and nice on St. Patrick's Day beautiful on St. Patty's Day yes thank you Mike Pinch me, it's real, right? Yeah, it is real. Okay. <laughs> AZ, 651, about 53 degrees. And travel can be expensive. However, there are ways around it. Tomorrow on GMSA, how to visit great locations without breaking the bank. Outside with live cam, let's do that sunrise check with Mike Oster Hage. Yeah, it's legit, Mike. The sun is just beginning to start to peak over the horizon just a little bit. We'll wrap up GMSA after this. Welcome back. Let's uh, take a look at this incident at uh, 410 in East Houston. So this is uh, Loop 410 on the east side near Houston Street. We've got some construction, but also an accident, and this is causing some big delays now as you're heading northbound on 410 towards I-10. On top of that, we have a minor accident on the Cloverleaf there at I-10 and 410. So this is just going to cause more delays. We also do uh, have an accident at I-10 and Fresno, but there's uh, a look at those incidents there, you can see some of the delays, some of the reds and oranges starting to show up. I-10 and Fresno, a few delays there as you're coming into downtown, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, boy, no problem as far as weather is concerned. And yes, there is the glow of the morning sunrise. It is going to be spectacular. We're at 51 degrees right now, upper 40s in parts of the hill country. Absolutely sensational day today. 78 degrees for a high temperature. It gets warmer the next couple of days, and then another front's going to kind of trim temperatures somewhat. Not a drop of rain in sight. Just beautiful, beautiful weather. Thank you, guys. Yeah, we'll enjoy that weather and have a great day. We'll see you back here at 9.